Hello everyone, it's really good to see so many people here. Um, as Anne-Marie said, I'm going to talk about evenings and weekends. So, as we all know in this room, that care homes run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, they don't stop. But m almost all the research and quite a lot of the inspections go on Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 in office hours. So as researchers, although we've been doing research for quite a while, we're pretty much always out the door of a care home by 5.30 at the latest. Um, and we <laughs> arrive generally at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and that happens Monday to, Monday to Friday. And this got us thinking, well actually, what's it like the rest of the time? When we're not here, what's it like in the evenings? What's it like at the weekends? Now, is it any different? So that's where this, this, this part of the project began. That kind of thought around, what's it, what's it like when we're not there? So what we decided to do was to run a, run a small study alongside the main study. So, as, as Anne-Marie said, 34 homes were recruited, 293 residents took part. What we did for this study, this, this bit about evenings and weekends, is go back to a small number of homes and residents outside of office hours. So, quality of life data was collected on 99 residents um, who participated in, the, participated in the main study. So data was either collected on the weekday between 4.30 and around 8 o'clock, or on a weekend, Saturday, or a Sunday morning um, between 10.30 and about 2.30 or something. So, so that's when that data, the, when I'm talking about outside of office hours, that's when I was in the home. So some of you may have experienced me coming in, <coughs> wandering around, seeing, seeing what was going on on a Saturday morning, on a Sunday morning, on a Thursday evening. So 49 residents were observed during the evenings and 50 were observed at the weekend. And we use the observational ASCOT tool that Amory talked about alongside interviews with residents, staff. And so we had 99 residents take part and they, were, they lived in 13 homes, five residential and eight nursing. And actually we, it matched the main study quite nicely. So in the main study, 35% of participants um, lived in residential homes. In the evening and weekend, 99, 99 residents, that was 36%. So it kind of matched the main study. And if we look at those 99 residents that took part, took part both in the main study and in the weekend study, again, two thirds were female, 95% were white, 70% were aged between 80 and 99, 60% had a uh, diagnosis of dementia, and 40% had no capacity consent. So, the, my, my subsample, the 99, weren't that different from the 293. What did I find out? So what, I'm going to start with thinking about what was quality of life like during the weekends and in the evenings? So basically, the basic domains, that's the accommodation, personal cleanliness and comfort, that's safety, and food and drink, tended to be rated more highly than the higher order domains. So, social interaction, occupation, control of daily life. In other words, there was more unmet need in those higher order domains. And actually, you may remember back from to Anne-Marie's presentation, she told you a very similar story about the main study when she was there, when Grace and Sinead were there, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. And this is a visual representation, so here. So what we have is the more basic domains on the left-hand side, moving across to the higher order domains. And a darker colour represents unmet needs. And you can see on this left-hand side there's much lighter colouring than there is on the right-hand side. So that's just showing that actually quality of life in the evenings and weekends was better in those basic domains than in those higher order domains. Another way of showing it is one of the spider diagrams. So this looks very similar to what Amri put up earlier. We've got, it's lopsided. So it goes out further on the right, which is the higher order domains, the accommodation, cleanliness, food and drink safety, than it does on the left, which is the, the higher order domains, control, occupation and social. So that's what quality of life looked like at weekends, for instance. But I'm going to think about actually, how does it actually compare and one of the ways we compare is by not necessarily always looking at individual domains, but bringing together the ratings for all of those domains into a single rating. 
So we can get the ratings of indiv individual domains and add them together to create an overall score. But we, we don't value each, each domain equally. Some domains we value a little more than others. So that in, the, in that final score, some domains count for more. And the reason is because people don't tend to value things the same. So we might think that, you know, and, and research has been done, that we, we know that people think control is more important than safety, or choice is more important than food and drink. And by I'm, I'm drawing on that work, we, we, we create an overall score that reflects people's preferences. And this overall score can vary between 1 and minus, two point, minus 0 0.23. And one is what we call the ideal state. So if every domain was in was ideal state, everything was great in every domain, an individual or a group of individuals would get one. If everything was really, really bad, everything was really poor, had unmet needs across every domain, they'd have the minus score, the minus, minus 0 0.23. The overall score for the study, that was 293 people, data collected between Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, was 0.78. We also looked at expected, and that's what people's lives are like when circuits don't help them. Now those 99, Monday to Friday, were, were, their score was 0.12. At weekends, the 99, the 99 people's score was 0.09. So very similar, it wasn't a huge difference. So that meant that the gain, the, the amount of impact that was had, being had, the amount of impact people received from their services was larger Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, than it was at weekends. One of the things we can do is start to think about, well, actually, what's going on? So overall, social <coughs> work life was lower during evenings and weekends than it was during the week, during office hours. The expected difference were quite, quite similar. And because of that, it meant that, actually, care homes were doing more to improve residents' quality of life during... Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and they were at weekends. This suggests that care home residents experience the worst quality of life at weekends and evenings than they do Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. What I'm going to do now is think about, actually, is there any difference in the domains? So there's quite a lot of data here, and this is the basic domains. And what we've got is the different, different uh, state, <coughs> outcome state. So I ideal state, everything's absolutely how you want it. No needs, everything's okay. Some needs, well that means that people, people's quality of life is effect, affected in the domain. And high level needs, where needs are so bad that they have a health implication. So what, what we find is, is that there are some differences, but there's, there's no change between people's experience of high, um, high level needs, evenings and weekends in those basic domains. So if you look at food and drink, there's no one was rated as having high level needs in the, in the week. Come to the weekends and evenings, again, no high-level needs. And it's the same across all domains. There's no real change in, in, the, in the high level needs between <coughs> office hours and out of office hours. With some needs, there is some change. So if you look at, for example, personal safety, some needs goes from 4% Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, to 11% out, out of office hours. There's also some changes in ideal state and no needs. Um, and, and what you see is, is a shifting of ratings from ideal state to no needs. So yeah, no, no needs, there's increases in no needs and decreases in ideal state. There's also some increases in some needs in food and drink safety and personal cleanliness. But there's no change at all in <coughs> high level needs. When we look at the higher order domains though, that's accommodation, social participation and control, we see something slightly different. And again we have percentage ratings for each of those domains, so social participation, occupation and control. And what we see is, is a much greater difference between week, what people's life is like at the weekends and what it's weekends and evenings and what it's like in office hours. Starting with, if you look at high level needs, so social participation and involvement, only 1% of the 99 people were rated as having high level needs um, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Come back at the evenings and weekends, it's 10%, or 9%, so it's gone up quite a bit. 
And that's the same in occupation. The occupation goes from 5 to 15%. Control goes from 0 to 4. We also see an increase in the uh, level of some needs. So if we look at social participation involvement, those 99, 24% were rated as having some needs Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. By the weekends, it's 52%. And that happens across the domain. So you see in occupation it goes from 29% <coughs> to 51%. And in control it goes from 21 to 46 We see less change in the dignity domain. So that tends to stay very, very similar. So there's not much change in the high level needs. There's not much change in some needs. There's some shift between ideal and no needs. So... Yep. Across social, occupation and control, fewer residents are rated as ideal or no needs and more are rated as having some or high level needs. It suggests that there are a greater level of unmet needs in these domains at weekends and evenings. But what I wanted to think about was actually what was going on when I was there. Because I, I spent lots of time standing in care homes at 6.30 in the evening or 10.30 on a Sunday morning. So what, what was it like being there? How did, it, how did it feel? So actually, what it felt like was quieter. So I spent a lot of time in, in care homes Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and they are incredibly busy. I mean, a lot of you work and live in care homes, and they're so busy. So there's residents, there are staff, there are visitors, there are health visitors, there might be someone with a dog, there might be a singer, there's normally someone doing maintenance. It's very busy. Actually, Sunday morning, 6 o'clock, feels much quieter. There's less people. Lack of activity. So there seem to be less activities going on. So almost every care home I've been in, Monday to Friday, there's an activity schedule. There's some kind of organised activity going on. There's something happening. Very rarely on a Sunday morning was there an organised activity, <coughs> or at 7 o'clock in the evening was an organised activity. So much less sort of of this activity going on, much quieter. The one that sort of surprised me was lack of visitors. I suppose I always, I always assumed that there'd be quite a lot of people coming to visit relatives um, at six o'clock or on Sunday morning. I was thinking, people on the way home from work, and I, I, perhaps I was just thinking about myself, if I was going to visit my mum, I would go on the way home from work. So six o'clock would be the sort of time you'd see me in a care home if I was visiting, or actually I'm more likely to be free on a Sunday morning than on a Monday morning. So I, I, I sort of assumed that actually I would see quite a lot of family members, particularly, particularly children, particularly people who were, who were unable to go perhaps Monday to Friday because they were working. But what I seem to, and it was a little way into the study, I started to think, I just, I'm not seeing what I thought I might see. There were still not, not lots of visitors. <coughs> um, and, I'm really, and I'm really interested to follow this up at some point to actually it's, you know, get some, get, gets more than just some kind of anecdotal, anecdotal feeling of lack of visitors, but actually perhaps count visitors. Look, look at the, look at the uh, signing in books and see people do come on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. The other thing that I that, that, that noticed was people going to their rooms or beds earlier, and obviously I'm not talking about the weekends, I'm talking about the evenings. So people, and this is why, I, why I, although I'm talking about evenings, I said I go in at 4.30 4 or 4 o'clock, which isn't quite the evening, that's, that's still the daytime. But I found if I went in at 5.30, 6 o'clock, I might only get half an hour before some people <coughs> went off to their rooms, doors became closed. Um, and that's why, although I was doing evenings, I pretty much never stayed later than 8 o'clock in any care home because I would be in a situation where I'd have no one left to observe. Because I can't observe if someone's gone to their room and closed their door, we observe in public areas. And of course this has implications for... Uh, how, we, how we do our work. So actually, I, I don't know what's going on behind that door. <coughs> so someone could be in bed doing nothing. They could actually be sitting in their room, watching their favourite show, reading their favourite book. I don't know. We don't know. So we don't know what's going on in that room. Um, so it can be very hard to do what we do. It's much easier in the daytime because people might be sitting in the lounge. Um, we, know, we know that actually some people have gone to bed because they say I'm going to bed, but... It's a kind of unknown that we are unable to, to sort of see behind. So that's kind of the you know, what, what I felt sort of coming away from the observations. There are a few limitations. Obviously, one of those I just mentioned that that people you know, go to their rooms, doors close, people go to bed, makes it makes us unable to observe at that point. 
but also it's quite a small sample, so 99 people. So make, we're making we're making generalizations from a small sample. There's also a sense in which ASCOT ASCOT tool, that's a tool we use to uh, understand people's quality of life, may not be sensitive enough or the best tool to uh, to judge what's going on that it may, uh, may actually underestimate the differences. And this is because the way ASCOT works is, although you're doing observations, you're observing what's going on, the interviews, the way they work, they ask about a more general quality of life. So the ratings that are made on people's evenings reflect also partly general quality of life rather than specifically just the evenings. And this is I think that actually it may be good to use ASCOT alongside another tool. So one example might be uh, dementia care mapping, which people may have come across, which is a tool where you look at what people are doing every few minutes and you, and you note their activity. So you can compare activity at two time periods, um, as well as having a more, the ASCOT would, would give you a more sense of quality of life. You could actually look at differences in activity. You could sort of say, well, actually, at the, at the weekend, people spend 20% of their time sleeping, uh, but actually Monday to Friday it's 10% of their time, which is not something that ASCOT gives you. So perhaps ASCOT alongside another tool might be a better way to understand what's going on at different, uh, different times of the week. It's also, we need to think, limitation study, is think about rate of bias. And that is purely, I went in at weekends, I went in at evenings, and I, and I rated people's quality of life, like it was 99 people. The Monday to Friday rate was done by someone else, normally Grace, Sinead. Um, and what if actually the difference isn't because their life's different, but because Grace or Sinead have a different perspective or view things differently and decide to make slightly different ratings to me? Well, we have thought about this before. And on previous studies, we've, done, we've looked at what's called interrate reliability. And that is, can two people <coughs> using the same tool, looking at the same event, rate the same. So Sinead and I spent a long time standing next to each other in care homes rating the same, per the same person. And I think, I think in the end we rated probably 70 people at two time points, so 140 odd observations. And what we found is actually, despite us being different people with different views, we do rate quite, quite, quite similarly. It's, it's, we have good interrate reliability. And that's good, that's what, that's what we want. Um, and we know that actually Sinead and Grace they have good interrate reliability because they did the same on, on early in this study. They stood next to each other, they observed the same things and, came to, and then rated and compared and found that actually they agreed a lot of the time. So this, but, uh, there is still a slight issue around interrate reliability because Sinead and I, interrate, interrate reliability is on three levels. So we used, we used to judge people on three levels, now we judge people on four, so there's a slight change. So we do need to look again at the interrate of liability and, and rate of bias and how that might be impacting upon the differences we're finding in evenings and weekends and office hours. Despite that, I think the, study, well, the study does seem to suggest that, that people's quality of life is lower during weekends and evenings compared to office hours. And that, that inherently there are greater levels of unmet need, particularly in the higher order domains when you're thinking about people's lives in the evenings and at the weekends. And this does suggest that if, if we as researchers want to understand people's lives and how, they, and how their lived experience in care homes, we need to think beyond Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, but think about research that manages to reflect the whole week, manages to reflect the weekends, the evenings, bank holidays, wh whatever it is, rather than just coming in at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Monday, going at 4. But, but we may not be really representing people's lives. And Further work needs to look at rate, rate of bias, as I said, but also I, I need to look at the characteristics of residents and homes. So, um, is this difference the same for all types of resident? Is it the same? Is the difference more in nursing homes? Is it more in residential homes? And also I need to look at evenings and weekends separately. Because so, so far, I've lumped them together, and they are different. <coughs> one, 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 how many people are ending their day and going to bed? Another one is the mornings on another day. So they, they, they could be very different. <coughs> At the moment, the analysis is lumped them together. It's just the, the first kind of step of trying to build a picture. So that's kind of what the sort of really emerging findings um, of this stream of work. And rather like Anne-Marie, what I've got to say is this is, this, is our, this is our views and not the views of our funders, NIHR or the Department of Health. <laughs>